it is. The 49ers, to me, are the team that went, yeah, 6-10, and 10, but I still think they can make a run to the conference championship game. They have their quarterback in place with Garoppolo, and they added great pieces. Jarek McKinnon is going to be the fourth highest paid running back in all of football. And just wait until you see how Kyle Shanahan uses him in that offense. What's going on, everybody? C4 here. And today, take a seat. We just need to sit down and talk about the upcoming 2018-2019 National Football League season. And we need to address an elephant in the room. The elephant is, with all these big dog teams, and you guys knowing that I'm an Eagles fan, who is you know being talked about right now as a potential team that can knock off my Eagles from being the undisputed top team in the National Football League that is completely overrated. So what we are going to do today is I'm gonna lay a case to why there's only one truly overrated team in the National Football League for the upcoming season. If you agree, disagree, everything in between, feel free to you know hit me up in the comment section below, but don't at me on Twitter. Now there can be runners up to this award. I'm not gonna personally put my Philadelphia Eagles into the mix just because the roster is there. The roster is there, there's barely any turnover. The Philadelphia Eagles are gonna be very nice next year. But if I'm looking at the, the grand scheme of things, overrated teams in the AFC, I definitely want to talk about the Miami Dolphins just because of good morning football. Uh, I watch this show every morning, but it seems like most of the panelists, it was Nate Burleson and uh, Peter Schrager were saying the Dolphins are going to be a team to be feared with next season. I went, uh, no. Uh, no. The other team, kind of overrated a little bit, I would say is the Kansas City Chiefs. I think way too many people are putting stock within Mr. Patty Mahomes. We don't know yet. It is a wait-and-see approach. They could be very good. They have lots of explosive options, but just wait and see. Don't be proclaiming that they're going to win the very difficult AFC West. Little low-key in the AFC is the Denver Broncos. Just assuming that Case Keenum will be able to replicate the form he had with the Minnesota Vikings with the Denver Broncos, you know, could be too big of a jump. It's a different conference. It's different teammates. Could be different. But when you look to the NFC, there is only one team, and that's what the team I'm going with for the entire NFL that is truly overrated, and that is the 2017 6-10 San Francisco 49ers. Now, they are overrated because I, I feel like the only way to be overrated is you have to get rated by people in the media, and people in the media are shipping whatever Kyle Shanahan is selling these guys right now. I've seen ESPN. It, sure, sometimes you get the Skip Bayless, clickbaity. I mean, do you really care about that person's opinion? But countless people have the Niners winning the division. They have the Niners going deep in the playoffs. There has been countless people that are holding positions, getting paid their income to talk about football, saying that the 49ers could go to the championship game. I think um, Colin Cowherd's won. There's a couple on NFL Network uh, just off the top of my head. Is this the same 49ers team that, that I, I see? I see a team that's absolutely going to be better. I see a team that's very, very promising. I do not see a roster that's, that jumps off the pace and say they can win their own division. I think they're going to be in a battle to finish second in their division. They could very well be a wild card team. But for the, the praise that they are finding themselves getting right now is simply absurd. And for me, makes them the most undisputed, overrated team in the NFL. Let's look at their roster. So the big one is at quarterback. They paid Jimmy Garoppolo like a legitimate franchise quarterback. Lots and lots of money, and you're going to expect immediate turnaround there. This is a guy last year that was 5-0 in his starts. He had 1,500 yards. Looks like, okay, 5-0. Okay, we'll start there. The record. Record looks really nice. He's never lost a game. But then when you look at the stats, 1,500 yards, 7 touchdowns, 5 picks. Now what that tells me is either A, Jimmy Garoppolo is overrated, or B, he didn't really have the offensive weapons around him. If he is truly this great quarterback, he didn't have the offense around him. He had the coach, the offensive mind of Kyle Shanahan, but the playmakers weren't there. So then that turns you to what weapons do they have as they enter this season to help Jimmy Garoppolo not have seven touchdowns to five picks, which is not a very good ratio. Well, when you look at what they had last year, you had Carlos Hyde, no longer there. Uh, you had Marquise Goodwin, 1,000 yards, pretty one-dimensional, but still a really good deep threat. You had Kittle, who's a, you know above-average tight end. Trent Taylor, Pierre Garçon was hurt. That's that's it. They had no receivers outside of Marquise Goodwin, who had more than 900 yards. Let alone Marquise Goodwin didn't even finish with 1,000 yards receiving. 962 yards. So they didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver, and they're not nearly as adept say as my Philadelphia Eagles, who also didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver. But we had four or five guys that had close to 1,000 and almost double-digit touchdowns in Zach Ertz, Alshon Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar. 
So, what did they do this year to get that drastic turnaround? Looking at the weapons, they went out. They have Pierre Garçon, who's a year older, coming off an injury. They have Marquise Goodwin. You have Trent Taylor, and you have Dante Pettis. So they invested a second round pick in, which yeah, I mean, he's a. I actually like him as a player, not as a second round pick. Right now, he is much more refined as a special team playmaker who's gonna have to find his niche in Kyle Shanahan's offense versus some other players that were still on the board that could very well have a defined role as either an outside or a slot wide receiver. So, as far as pure weapons, sure, you're getting a little bit more chemistry, you're getting a little bit more cohesion. But it's still the same kind of playmakers. Is George Kittle going to take that next step to be considered an upper echelon tight end? I probably would bet against that. You lost Carlos Hyde, who was a bona fide, went healthy. You know, between 11 and 1,300 yards from a scrimmage player that could always hover around double-digit touchdowns. You go and get Jarek McKinnon, who's a nice gadget player. He has been for Minnesota for quite some time. I don't know if he's... Um, as good of a of a three down back as maybe they're paying him to be, but he's still he's a shifty catcher, pass catcher out the back. And then you got you know Joe Williams, Matt Breida, a couple guys there. You have Kyle Uzcheck, the highest paid fullback in the league. Are you seeing the weapons that that's going to make this team drastically better? I think, like I said, I, I can't stress enough that I think the 49ers are going to be a team that's going to be excited, fun to watch. They're going to be fun to watch, and they're going to be improved. But to have this thing where they go from last to first, they pull the Philadelphia Eagles, essentially, I'm not seeing it. They use their first-round draft pick to bring in Mike McGlinchey, who was definitely not a sure thing at tackle, I think. No real sure things at tackle. I thought that Mike McGlinchey and Connor Williams were nice. They were, you know, legitimate first-round picks. But I don't think Mike McGlinchey was a top-ten pick. They're going to take him, slide him out there, right tackle. Does, does that, was right tackle a, a glaring weakness on the 49ers last year? That whole offensive line unit wasn't anything special. You bring in Weston Richburg, who's an average center for the New York Giants, has had some good seasons, but, you know, down the stretch, hasn't been particularly strong. You got Josh Garnett, who's kind of, you know, struggling to find his niche, maybe in bust territory, has some great pro football focus. Lakin Thompson was a bust in Detroit, former first-round pick, got shipped out of town. And you got Joe Staley, who's aging. So, you know, I'm not going to be one that is ageism against your left tackle. We have Jason Peters up here in Philadelphia. He still plays at a high level. But again, I'm looking at the offense and I'm still thinking this is like this is a team that's going to go to the NFC Championship. Crazier things can happen. I'm sure people said that about my Philadelphia Eagles. But Philadelphia is the exception, not the new norm. And the 49ers just I just don't see it, man. I don't see the hype that this team supposedly has from the offensive side. So, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll, you know, reserve my judgments. Let's look at the defense. Now, when you look at the defense, uh, you know, they are transitioning. They're still probably working through the switch from when Chip was there. They did the 3 4. Now they're running a 4 3. Defensively, they're, uh, I would say, above average. They could be maybe a little bit better than above average, but starting with the front, you have Eric Armstead, Earl Mitchell. Uh, DeForest Buckner and Solomon Thomas. Solomon Thomas struggled last year as he's converting from a D tackle to a defensive end. Buckner was the best player on their team, debatably. Earl Mitchell is just a veteran presence, and Eric Armstead wasn't particularly strong in the switch. He is more suited to be a 3 4 type player than a 4 3. I I'm actually surprised they haven't tried to move him. Move him to a 3 4 team, get some good value. I think I think it, from a 3 4 standpoint, that's where he, that, you, know, you could get maybe a, another linebacker, maybe another corner, or hell, maybe we'll bring a wide receiver in. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just don't see that defensive line being anything more than above average with Buckner being the, the key part of that. You look at the linebackers. You have Eli Harold, Reuben Foster, Malcolm Smith. You drafted Fred Warner in the third round. So you got athleticism. It's lucky for them that Reuben Foster didn't actually beat up his girlfriend and he should be available to play. But that is just still, you know, you have a good centerpiece and then the other guys are just guys. You know what I'm saying? There, there's no one there. Malcolm Smith, outside of the Super Bowl, what has he done? Nothing particularly. He's just been decent. You look in the secondary, they add in Richard Sherman. That's a gamble. I mean, sure, Sherman, I'm actually one of the people that, you know, kind of rate Richard Sherman. A lot of people just said, oh, it's the scheme, this and that, he's not athletic. I just think he's a solid corner, but coming out that injury, now he's out of his scheme. You've seen firsthand here, referring it back to my Eagles, when a Seattle Seahawks flies the coop, goes somewhere else in Byron Maxwell, they get exposed. There's always that probability, probability, chance. We won't say it's a probability. We'll give him a shot. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But there's always a chance. That that could happen here with Mitch Sherman. I really did like the DJ Reed pick. Good nickel. Uh, but you got Akilo Witherspoon, a third round pick out of Colorado. I think he's a solid player, but still probably not there yet. Other than that, not a whole lot of depth. Kawan Williams and DJ Reed are going to battle up for the nickel. That is still just, I would say, an above average, maybe some upside secondary. You got Jaquiski Tart, really underrated strong safety. I like him. Jimmy Ward is, eh. 
you know, he's he's kind, he's like one of those guys that's like he's not really a great corner, not really a great safety. I probably think Adrian Colbert, who was out of um, uh, Miami last year, real late, or you have Tarvarius Moore, who's an athletic monster. One of those guys probably could supplant him to be the starting free safety. But all in all, we bring it back to this is a defense that has uh, yeah a couple nice players. If Richard Sherman can put it all together, Reuben Foster doesn't hit a sophomore slump. You have Buckner, you have Solomon Thomas. There's a little bit of upside here to the defense. But all in all, this is a team that I think eight and eight. This is 8-8, eight 9-6, eight, with a ceiling of 10 wins. And that is still massively improved from being bottom in the West last season. That is still the right direction for the 49ers. That is going to put them on a right path to not only attract potential free agents to come in 2019-2020 season, but just, you know, change the culture and just bring it back to where it was in the Harbaugh days where the 49ers were looked upon as a, as a really, really difficult team to play against and not just, oh, you know, they're just the Kaepernick sucks kind of era. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, ultimately, the Niners last year were probably better than their record. They lost a lot of close games that, you know, I think it was like one score game. They lost like four or five games to open up that were one score games. But let's be honest. Did they deserve to win in any of those games? Like, those were just games that was like, yeah, you know, neither team, you know, they lost. It wasn't like they got robbed or got anything like that. So, I mean, from a competitive standpoint, there could be the turnaround. But this drastic, oh my God, they're going to go from being, you know, bottom dwellers like the Philadelphia Eagles were in the NFC East to Super Bowl champions or anything like that. Pump the brakes a little bit, everybody. And you're gonna, it's going to get annoying, I think. And you're going to keep hearing the 49er talk that they're going to be this drastically improved team that's going to take the league by storm. And I'm not buying it, which is why I have them as my most overrated team in the NFL. If you agree, disagree, Anything in between? Let me know in the comment section below who your most overrated team is for the upcoming 2018-2019 NFL season. And until next time, guys, it's C4 saying like, subscribe if it's your first time stopping by, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.